Hi clarinet players, my name is Miss Emily. It's nice to meet you or see some of you again. Um, so today our 10 minute video is around the idea of warming up. So what we wanna do is we don't always just wanna get out our clarinet and play everything right away. We really wanna make sure we do um, a good warm up. So um, we've already done our stretches. So um, the first thing we should do is make sure your reed is nice and wet. I've been soaking mine. And make sure you also turn it around, don't forget. So the whole reed needs to be wet. Now, why does the, the reed need to be wet? You can answer or you can wait for my answer. Hmm. The reed needs to be wet because that's what's vibrating. So if it's dry, you're just gonna get that horrible squeaking sound. But if it's wet, it'll allow for a really nice vibration and a good clarinet sound. Okay, so now that our reeds are wet, we're going to put it on our mouthpiece. And it's really important that your reed is in the right spot. So you want the top of your reed matching up perfectly with the top of your mouthpiece. So go ahead and take a look. Okay, it matches up right there. We don't want it too far down and we don't want it too far up. Next thing, you want your ligature right underneath where the hard part of the wood starts on your reed. So take a look how I have my, the soft part of my reed, the hard part, and a little line sometimes on the mouthpiece, then that's where you want your ligature, okay? So go ahead, make sure you have that ready and done. Press pause if you need a couple extra minutes. And just make sure you can play a few notes and make a few good sounds. So everything's working. Okay, so we just did some stretches. So now the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our posture is really straight. Remember, we want our back straight because our lungs go all the way from the front of our rib cage to the back of our rib cage. So we want those nice and really, really full, okay? Now we want our feet straight too, of course, but the most important thing is our torso and from our shoulders down to the bottom of our rib cage. Okay, now that everything is ready to go for your clarinet, um, the first exercise that we're gonna do, well, is we're gonna talk about our embouchure. So take off your barrel and your mouthpiece, okay? So we should have just this. If you want to, you can just keep your rest of your clarinet um, in your hand, you can leave it in your lap, or some people can put it on top of their case. I'll leave it here for now. So to have a really good embouchure, remember what we need to do. We need to roll our lip under, have our thumb on top, teeth on top and support. Mm-hmm. Like you're giving a little bit of a smile. So now this allows all of these muscles right here in our embouchure to really support our mouthpiece and our reed. We don't want to bite down. We just want to have strong muscles and we don't want to have chipmunk cheeks. No, because then we'll get that horrible squeak too. So we just want to have this. And then, so practice making a few weird sounds on your mouthpiece just like that. parents or your grandparents or your dogs are going to think, what are they doing? Now notice, my cheeks are not puffed, so make sure your cheeks and your muscles look like mine. Not <laughs> we don't want any of those sounds, just a nice, strong, smile embouchure. So that's a good vocabulary review for us right now. First, we have posture, which is sitting up straight. Second, we have ligature, which is French for tie. It, it's what ties or holds our reed onto our mouthpiece. And last, we have embouchure, which is the muscles and the formation of our mouth. So what I'd like to do, let's do a little bit of call and response. I'm going to play some rhythms just on our mouthpiece and our barrel, and I want you to respond. Okay, sitting up nice and tall. My turn first. Your turn. We'll keep going. Your turn. Embouchure strong. Very nice. OK, 
Okay, go ahead and put your barrel and mouthpiece back onto your clarinet. And I just want to do a couple um, breathing and articulation exercises. So bring your hand right here. And for clarinet, we want to make sure that we say foo because our tongue has to touch three. Foo, foo, foo. So repeat after me. Foo, 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 foo. Your turn. Foo, 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 foo. Good. Repeat after me. We're going to do two more. Two, 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 two. Last one. Two, 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 two. Now, if you're doing it correctly, you should have a wet spot right there from exactly where your tongue was hitting, and that's where our tongue has to hit our reed. Okay. So now, make sure you're ready to go. Practice a few notes. Put your instrument back together. And again, we're still in the warm up phase. This is what you should always do before we warm up and practice our band music, our full orchestra music, playing solos or etudes, always warm up. So our next um, activity for our warm up is our long tones. We're gonna start on our C. We're gonna work our, our way chromatically up to open G. So hold your fingers for me and show me a C. Now go to C sharp. Now go to D. Thumb is on the back the whole time. Now D sharp, bottom key. Some of you have learned it here. This is a good thing for you guys to practice. Now you're gonna go up to E, thumb and first finger. You're gonna go F natural, which is just your thumb. Then for some of you who are more advanced, I'd like you to do F sharp as thumb and two side keys. For those of you who don't know that yet, you can do F sharp with your front finger. Then we're gonna go to open G. So we're gonna play it on whole notes. So please join me. Okay, we're gonna do our long tones. Ready? One, two, whole notes. Now, what do long tones do? They get us used to using our breath support. They get our embouchure nice and warmed up and they get us ready to play our instrument. Now let's go back down. G, F sharp, F, E, D sharp or E flat, same note, D, C sharp, C. So starting on open G, please, let's do whole notes going back down. Starting on open G, ready? One, two, ready. job. Sorry for the noise of the trash truck outside. It's trash day. <laughs> um, so make sure when you're going down, try and take as few breaths as possible. Take really big breaths and then see how far you can get through those and keep a really strong forte sound. Remember, forte is what? Loud. Then we have piano, which is what? Soft. Okay, so we have forte at the top of our range, piano at the bottom of our range, and then we have mezzo piano and mezzo forte in the middle. So really stay at a nice strong forte. Okay, now for those of you who are more advanced, um, again, you can go ahead and pr uh, pause the video right now and practice those long, long tones. But for those of you who are more advanced, you can start working your way down to low E. I would love everyone to practice that, but if you'd like to practice with me, I'll show you once. It's gonna be C, B natural, which is first finger plus our banana key. This is our chromatic fingering, okay? C, B natural, B flat, A, G sharp, right hand finger, one, G sharp, G, F sharp, these two, F natural, E. So I'll do this once, but of course you can rewind and practice with me as many times as you want. It's a great challenge for those of you who don't know some of these notes yet. I'll stand up so you can see my clarinet. Okay. 
Okay, so that's gonna be a great thing to practice. A really important thing to remember as a clarinet player, we should always have lots of freedom, okay? Everything should be really loose. So if you could with me, just practice doing this on your clarinet. You can even go. We have to have really loose fingers. If things are stiff, we're not gonna be able to play fast. So that includes this right here. Don't keep that finger jammed up in there. Try and release it. Your points of control over your clarinet should be your teeth, support, your thumb support, and look how far my thumb is out. It's not crammed in here, it's right here. And sometimes our knees, that's fine too, if we're resting it between our knees, but don't rest it here. Don't think, get everything caught up in there. Okay, our last activity before uh, we dismiss for this video is our articulation. Now it's our next vocabulary word. So we have posture, we have embouchure, the muscles in our mouth, we have ligature, French for tie, and to hold our reed together. And our last one is articulation. Articulation is what our tongue does in order to get the reed to make a sound. So our regular articulation, which your teachers probably talk about all the time, is tonguing and slurring. So tonguing, slurring, versus tonguing. So what's the difference between thu, 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 and thu? So practice some regular tonguing for me on any note. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about is our slurring. For slurring, we only tongue the first note and everything else is just the air that comes after it. We only use our tongue once. So practice that. So slurring, they're all connected. We only use our tongue on the first note. And our third one is something called staccato. Does anyone remember from your books and from your teacher what staccato means? If you know, you can say it out loud. Good, if you got it right, great job. If you don't know it yet, it's, um, it's Italian for short. So staccato, we wanna make our notes as short as possible. So it sounds like this. We use our tongue for every single one, but it's really short bursts of air. So it's And our last one for today is called legato. Now, legato means tongued, but it's really smooth and really connected. So instead of thu, 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 it's thu, 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 thu. Okay, so that one sounds like this. So as a review, we have our regular tonguing. We have slur, staccato, and legato, tonguing but smooth. Sorry. So my friends, that'll give you a lot to practice for um, over these next couple weeks. Keep re-watching this video and warm up every single day, every single time you play your clarinet. Even if you can just do this warm up, warm up activity once a day without even playing your band music, that's a great start, okay? So the most important thing, sit up straight, have fun, keep these fingers relaxed. Because if you keep them relaxed, one day you're gonna be able to and have a really fun time doing that. Okay, guys, I'll see you again soon. Um, if you'd like to, you can always email me questions or if you are practicing and want to send videos, you can send them to emilykabitsky at gmail.com. So that's my name and it's spelled E-M-I-L-Y for Emily and then K-U-B as in boy, I-T-S-K-E-Y at gmail.com. Okay, guys, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you on our next video. Bye.